Now we come to the Malcolm Forbes Award for International Business News Reporting in Newspapers, sponsored by Forbes magazine. It has been won by the Wall Street Journal for their extensive series reports on how electronic devices enable protesters to communicate and gather support, but also how governments are using technology to spy on dissidents and track mobile phone users. A story basically of technology versus technology. Please. So we spoke a lot here about the Arab Spring tonight, and as you all know, I think very well, um, technology, generally speaking, received pretty good PR during the Arab Spring. Um, it was about, in a large part, about Twitter and Facebook and Skype, um, and the way that those technologies essentially galvanized a group of people and gave them power beyond what was expected. Um, but our series, as one of our sources put it, was uh, about sort of another side of technology. And the source said, well, you know, technology is a little bit like a knife. It can either be, you know, used to chop up a bunch of vegetables to make a delicious dinner, or it can be used to kill someone. Um, and and that, that other side, that latter side, is sort of what our series was about. Um, it was about British technology that Egyptian police used to eavesdrop on activists over Skype. It was about French technology that Muammar Gaddafi purchased um, in order to intercept people's emails, chats, Facebook messages, um, and it was about Ameri American technology that Bahrain is actually still using um, to block Shiite villagers from uh, posting in, in community web portals. And so generally speaking, at their root, the stories in our series warn that technology has no built-in moral compass, and that it's a tool that's only as moral as a company that buys it or a government that gets hold of it. And so I, I guess I'll just tell one story quickly um, about our reporting of the series. Um, I, I sort of spent months last year during the, the war in Libya sitting in our, I, I'm based in London, sitting in our office um, trying to figure out what company Gaddafi uh, used to buy this sophisticated internet snooping system which he used to track down dissidents and journalists and human rights campaigners. And um, I spent about months finally nailed down this French company uh, which we were 100% we were sure had sold Gaddafi this internet surveillance system. So we worked up a story. Um, but the problem was is that I was in London. Um, and the story was interesting, but it didn't, have, it didn't have so much color attached to it. And then all of a sudden, I woke up and got an email from Meg, who was in Tripoli at the time. And it, it was just a brief email. And all it said was, folks, this morning, I have found the internet surveillance monitoring center used by Gaddafi. <laughs> so this, is a great, this is a great email. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so basically what had happened was uh, Meg had uh, come across uh, one of Gaddafi's multiple unmarked internal security headquarters in Tripoli. And she did it by asking a cab driver to take her to various places that he believed Gaddafi's security services might be, might be working. And so she did this for three days, going to various different buildings all around Tripoli that this cab driver thought maybe Gaddafi's security agents might have been working in. And finally, he took her to a building on the, on the, after three days, on the fourth day. Um, and he actually, he didn't, he had been avoiding this building the entire time. And he was visibly uncomfortable as he dropped them off outside the building. And he told Meg as, as they were going in that the reason he was uncomfortable was that he had, and his father had both been uh, tortured in the basement of this building, which was a regional security headquarters for Gaddafi. And so this was, a, this was a few days after the fall of Tripoli, and it was absolutely completely abandoned. Meg walked in, she was the first reporter uh, to get there, and lo and behold, here was the entire internet surveillance center that this French company had installed. Um, so I guess that's what you call bringing home the bacon, or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so anyway, we really relied on this kind of reporting in this series. Steve was chasing people in the lobby of a Dubai Marriott after getting kicked out of a surveillance vendor conference. Um, Jen was crunching computer code here in New York, um, and it was very much a team effort. Um, so up here with me are Steve Steklow, Farnas Sihi, Margaret Coker, and Jennifer Valentino DeVries, all of whom were absolutely vital, as well as all the editors at the journal. I just want to quickly thank the OPC, um, which is particularly special to me because I'm one of those scholars who you guys saw the pictures on. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and
and I got my start uh, as a foreign correspondent uh, at the AP in Moscow thanks to an OPC scholarship. So thank you. Yeah.